What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're continuing the conservation project for this copy of Flash number 123, the first appearance of the Golden Age Flash Jay Garrick in the Silver Age, and the first acknowledgement of an alternate reality in which the Golden Age heroes exist which is the beginning of the multiverse concept in comic books. Published in September 1961 by DC, it was written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Carmine Infantino. It is also the first appearance in the Silver Age of Golden Age Flash villains, The Fiddler, The Thinker, and The Shade. This is a huge Silver Age key without which the multiverse concept in both DC and Marvel Comics wouldn't exist. In Episode 1, we completed a thorough assessment of this book and developed a conservation game plan. The cover had a small hole in it, but the major flaw we uncovered is that it appears someone spilled a can of Coke on the interior of this comic book and wraps 1, 6, 7, and 8 were affected fairly dramatically. Wrap 8 is the centerfold, which appeared to be ground zero for the spill, and also has a spine split we need to address. Here is our conservation plan for the book, including disassembly, wet cleaning, deacidification, resizing for the cover, stain removal for the inner wraps, tear seals, cold press, reassembly, folding, and final press. In episode 2, we disassembled the book to prepare for the coming work, setting aside the staples for use during reassembly later, carefully noting both the position and the orientation of each staple, and safely storing the interior pages away in mylar whilst we work on the cover. In episode 3, we completed work on the cover. We performed a total of three aqueous baths, each for five minutes. The first had a primary function of wet cleaning and contained a surfactant as well as calcium hydroxide in warm water. The second bath's primary function was to rinse away residual contaminants and the surfactant and consisted of calcium hydroxide in warm water. The last bath had a primary function of resizing the cover and contained methyl cellulose as a resizing agent along with calcium hydroxide to leave an alkaline reserve in the comic book to protect against future acid catalyzed hydrolysis of the paper. The rationale, formulae, calculations, and methods for all of these processes are explained in detail in my video on Advanced Comic Book Cleaning, Deacidification, and Resizing Methods which you can view by following the link to that video if you're interested. After all of the wet work was done, we completed an archival tear seal and began our drying and cold press process. The results were phenomenal, a cover which was dramatically brightened without substantial loss of ink, and the tear seal strengthened the page and was essentially invisible. The resizing will strengthen the paper and make it water resistant and we used no harsh chemicals that would provide aesthetically pleasing short-term results, but long-term damage to the paper. In episode 4, we started treating the stains on the interior wraps. Our approach was to start with the least invasive method on the wrap with the most severe staining, which was the centerfold, and regularly check our progress and step up to more invasive methods as necessary. Then, once we achieve the best result our knowledge and skills will afford us on the centerfold, we'll apply that method to the remaining pages so that we don't have a difference in paper quality or any remaining stains from wrap to wrap on the interior of the comic book. Our first step was a 500 milliliter wash consisting of 20% saturated calcium hydroxide in warm water with five drops of Triton X100 for 20 minutes. Triton X100 is a surfactant, and the primary goal of this first aqueous bath is washing or cleaning the paper. 
We followed this with a 300 milliliter bath of 33% saturated calcium hydroxide solution in tap water, but with concurrent exposure to our 465 nanometer wavelength blue LEDs at 4 inches for one hour. After this procedure, we dried the page and cold pressed it to have a look at the progress so far on the stains. We made considerable progress on the stains and retained good ink and paper integrity, but I felt we could do better. In particular, the first wash was very dirty, and upon reflection, I didn't like the page sitting in the really dirty wash for 20 minutes. So, we have both more work to do on the wrap and ideas for tweaks to the method for the next wrap. In episode 5, we continued work on the centerfold with concurrent photo and chemical bleaching. We use only 0.5% hydrogen peroxide with 25% saturated calcium hydroxide concurrent with our 465 nanometer blue LEDs for photo bleaching. We reviewed the literature to explain why it's contraindicated to use hydrogen peroxide at concentrations higher than 0.5% for paper conservation and why we never use chloramine T for bleaching in conservation. Total bleaching time was 2 hours with the bleaching solution replaced every 30 minutes throughout. We reviewed the results and decided we had taken this page as far as we wanted to. Under normal viewing light, the stains are no longer noticeable, although under very intense LED lighting, the barest hint of shading remained where the darkest stains were. If you wish to watch any of those episodes before watching this one, just click on the playlist I've created for this project. For this episode, I've combined the methods from episodes 4 and 5 and made some slight modifications and will be bleaching the rest of the inner wraps with the method I'll demonstrate today. This is the before state of the wrap we'll show you today, and I've prepared some graphics to illustrate the materials and methods more clearly than my verbal description because I've had a few viewers ask for clarity on the exact process. This is the seventh wrap, the second wrap in from the centerfold, and you can see the staining here is nearly as severe as we saw in the centerfold we have our work cut out for us. One technical note, I'm going to use video of the fourth wrap to demonstrate all the steps in today's video, but we'll show you the before after of the seventh wrap which went through the same process. In the final episode I'll show you before and after pictures of all of the stained wraps. We're going to start with a 10 minute wash in 25% saturated calcium hydroxide in water with one drop of Triton X100 per 100 mils of total solution. In episode 4 of this series with the centerfold, I did one wash of 20 minutes, but the rinse ate was very dirty after 20 minutes and I didn't like the paper sitting in those contaminants for so long. So, we are going to break the 20 minute wash into two identical 10 minute washes. Here's how I make the solution for the first wash. I start with warm tap water, in this case 375 milliliters in a small jar. When I say warm, I mean 55 to 70 centigrade, the low end of which is about as hot as you have your hot water heater set on, so full hot from your tap, or a bit warmer. I have good hard limestone filtered well water, so I use tap water, but if you have city water, best to use distilled. I'm using a heater plate with a magnetic stir bar. This makes it a little easier to show you and it's hands free, but you can get the same result with a microwave and stirring with a spoon. To the warm water, I add five drops of Triton X100. This goes into solution fairly easily, but you have to stir it or the drops will just settle to the bottom of your solution and when you pour it on the comic book wrap, the surfactant will mostly stay in the bottom of the vessel and then it won't be working on your stain. To this, I had 125 milliliters of my concentrated calcium hydroxide solution 
just before I'm ready to use it. You don't want to cook this solution with the calcium hydroxide very long because the calcium hydroxide will react with CO2 in the air to form calcium carbonate which won't be quite as effective. All right, now that we have our solution made up, we'll go ahead and prep our page. Here's my photo development tray. I have an affiliate link in the video description. You can order that from Amazon. One sheet of Holitex. There's our wrap. Again, this is not the, the one that I'm showing you in the before and after. It's just the one that I use for the video. One more sheet of Holitex. Then we'll introduce our solution. The page is dry at this point. We'll retrieve our little magnetic stir bar. So it will take a moment to overcome the hydrophobicity of the sizing. And we'll have to spend a little bit of time with the squeegee or with your hand, removing air bubbles, making sure the paper's flat, and making sure that everything is wetted. The Holitex helps in this regard because it is quite hydrophilic and has a huge surface area with all those fibers. So this does go much better with a non-woven polyester fabric, whether you're using Holitex or interleaving or Rame doesn't matter too much for this. I ended up buying a bulk row of Holitex on a big sale. So I was using Holitex for everything. I'm going to leave it in this solution for 10 minutes, as I mentioned. And we'll see how clean it gets and how easily we can distribute the cleaning between these two washes. So there is 10 minutes. Obviously you don't have to be that exact, but it's fun. And I'm ready to remove this page from the first wash. I did give it a couple of gentle rocks during that 10 minutes. I'm going to set my hobby mat here just so I don't get a lot of water on the granite countertop. It's a little bit easier to see the water and to clean it up. I'm going to lay some paper towel down. That's just for the page to sit on momentarily while we change the solution out. This is kind of slick. You can pull your Holitex sandwich up the edge of the tray. This will get it a lot drier so it won't be dripping all over quite as much as if you hadn't done that. And I'm going to try to make sure that the wrap itself is on the paper towel. Part of the purpose of this paper towel between washes is to just by capillary action pull a little bit more of that contaminated rinseate out. So I just poured the rinseate off. I did save it so we can get a picture and see just how much contamination we remove with each wash. And I also rinsed out the photo development tray just with water. Now we're going to introduce the second wash. And the second wash is going to be the same as the first wash. Remember, we're just taking the 20 minute wash we did before and splitting it into two 10 minute washes. So 25% saturated calcium hydroxide, warm water, one drop of Triton X100 per 100 milliliters. Occasional rocking. I'll retrieve that magnetic stir bar. And we'll transfer our page into the second wash. Here's something else. If you set one edge down and then sort of roll the page down, you really don't get very many bubbles that you have to remove. Of course, the page is already wetted, so doesn't take a lot of effort now to wet the page. Realize I put the photo development tray with that spout against the wall and so 
I wanted it to look nice for you and be aligned. This is going to be another 10 minute wash, so I'll start the timer. And I will do just one real quick. Make sure I don't have any air bubbles, but it doesn't take nearly as much effort as it did when we were actually wetting the page. And after 10 minutes has elapsed, I'm going to use essentially the same process to remove it from the second wash and put it into the rinse. Just try to start with a dry mat that will help me keep the page clean and getting cleaner by removing this dirty rinse aid. And use this same slick method, sort of sliding the Holytech sandwich off the edge of the photo development tray. Put it on a paper towel. That'll help pull some of that dirty rinse aid out through capillary action. So I want to make it sort of centered on the paper towel best I can quickly anyway. Pour this rinse aid off, save it for a photo. I'll rinse the photo development tray real quick with just tap water. And then we're going to introduce our rinse, which is the same as the two washes minus the Triton X100. So it's 25% saturated calcium hydroxide in warm tap water. And I'll introduce the solution to the photo development tray and then introduce our wrap into the solution. We're going to also do 10 minutes with this rinse. Main purpose of this rinse really is just removing the Triton X100. We don't want to leave any of that surfactant behind, even though it's likely pretty inert. This time I'll remember to put the flat edge of the tray toward the wall, although that puts the page upside down. And we'll start the timer for this 10 minute rinse. And after 10 minutes have elapsed, we're ready to move this page from our aqueous baths to our bleaching. Now you recall in episodes four and five that I did a wash with the same solution we've used here. And then I did a concurrent photo bleach with a wash that was in this photo development tray. And I did that for 20 minutes. And that was just in 25% saturated calcium hydroxide, which is a mild bleach. And we reviewed the results at the end of episode four and weren't quite satisfied, thought we could do more to remove that stain. So then in episode five, we stepped up to a bit more aggressive bleaching with 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. And we used the Holytex just on the hobby mat here. Now, since we had to do that, I'm going to omit the 20 minute wash that we, the 20 minute concurrent bleach with photo bleaching that we did on wrap one, because it's not going to have nearly as much effect as the more potent hydrogen peroxide photo bleaching that we're going to do. So it would really be redundant and a waste of time. So we're moving directly on to the method that we used in episode five, which is the photo, the wet photo bleaching with 0.5% hydrogen peroxide and 25% saturated calcium hydroxide sprayed onto our Holytech sandwich on the hobby mat with the 
465 nanometer blue LEDs held about four inches above the page. Here's our recipe. You do need to make this up in relatively small batches. Use fresh hydrogen peroxide because it does decay over time and you need to use it in a brown glass or some other photo opaque container because it will break down with light. If you want it to retain its potency, keep it sealed up tight, make small batches, keep it in brown glass. I make 200 mils at a time. And when we spray the sandwich with the Holitex, we're probably using about 20 mils. So 200 mils will give you about 10 of these sessions. We're going to squeegee the page off in between sessions and we're going to do 30 minutes times four total sessions. That's two hours total. So we are starting with a page. Here's my spray bottle that has been squeegeed. And the other thing you need to do is you need to keep it sealed in between spray uses because hydrogen peroxide will evolve a gas off and it will leak out of your bottle. So keep it sealed up as I mentioned. Close it in between uses. That's probably like I said about 10 to 20 mils that we spray on there each time and it does get used while the UV light is striking it and just on exposure to air. That's why we're doing every 30 minutes we're going to squeegee the page and reapply. So sweater box lid with some reflective tape, two LEDs, start my timer. This is going to be 30 minutes as I mentioned. After 30 minutes has elapsed, Stop the stopwatch, reset it, turn the LEDs off, set them aside, set the sweater box lid aside, remove our PVC spacers, take our squeegee, again make sure you have a nice smooth squeegee without any snags in it. Snags that definitely damage your Holitex and may very well damage your page. I've been squeegeeing this Holitex, probably squeegeed at least a dozen times without any noticeable damage to the Holitex. One thing that I find interesting is this squeegee when you roll it over the Holitex is just smooth enough that it doesn't snag anything I found if you wipe Holitex even with paper towel, it tends to snag the non-woven fibers, which then of course the whole thing unravels. So this squeegee method actually is less damaging to the Holitex than a paper towel is and therefore allows you to reuse it longer. And it is expensive, so that's a good thing not just from the standpoint of waste and putting fewer things in the landfill, but it saves us a couple pennies as well. I really like this squeegee. It sped up my work since I uh, experimented with it and started putting it into my standard toolkit. So now that I have squeegeed off the spent solution, I'm going to reapply, same solution. And as I mentioned, I'm going to do this a total of four times. You can kind of see, make sure that's sealed up, you can kind of see that when you squeegee it off, it gets a little bit less transparent, more translucent. And when you spray it, that process is reversed, right? It becomes a little bit more see-through. That'll give you some sense for how much. I don't think you can put too much. It'll be absorbed by the sandwich and it'll beat up. Uh, but you, you also are probably wasting some if you're spraying a lot more than that. 
because it's really only the solution that's in direct contact. Start our timer with the page that's actually doing any work. 30 more elapsed minutes. Now I skipped one in the interest of time. So this appears to you to be my third one, but this is actually the fourth one. And I'm gonna do the same process, turn the LEDs off, remove them, remove the sweater box lid, remove the PVC. And then I'll squeegee this page dry. So I'm starting the drying process now. I'm all done with bleaching. Obviously we're all done with washing and rinsing. And this squeegee here is actually preparing the page to start drying. So those of you that have watched the channel for a while know that we're going to use paper towels for blotting. And once you're done with your wet work, you want to dry the page as quickly as possible and as swiftly as possible, meaning don't leave it set around very long. And once you start drying it, dry it as quickly as you can. This will help minimize the possibility of ink loss and also ink bleed through or blurring of ink, which happens sometimes when ink starts to bleed within an image. It just isn't as sharp as it used to be. I have found these pages will tolerate this few hours of being wet reasonably well. Sometimes you do get ink bleed, but you don't get appreciable ink loss in this amount of time with these sorts of solutions. Even so, I want to get the page dried as quickly as I can. So by squeegeeing it before we put it in blotting material, I'm just speeding that process along. I've learned through experience that you're not actually getting the page that dry when you squeegee it. You're really just getting the sort of sopping water out of it. If you, which we will do in a moment, take this page and set it on a paper towel, you'll realize it's still quite wet. This is a doubled up paper towel, so two layers. I'm going to go ahead and put one below and then our sandwich, Holly Tex, our wrap from the comic book, Holly Tex two more layers of paper towel. I'm going to place my repurposed granite slab on top of it. And because I squeegeed it, it's a little bit dry. We can go about 30 minutes before we change that out. And I'll change out the paper towels a second time after about four to eight hours. And then I'll change them a third time and leave them for 12 to 24 hours. And then the page will go into my cold press between some pages of Bristol paper. And when it comes out, we'll be ready to look at some results. First, let's look at results from the washes. I'm much pleased with this. It's much more uniform, the removal of contaminants. You can see we move quite a bit with the first wash, more with the second. By the time we get to the third, it's actually quite a bit cleaner than the second wash in the episode four, I guess it was. So I think this is a dramatic improvement. And let's have a look at that page out of the cold press. It looks beautiful. Essentially, the stain is gone. In any kind of normal reading light, you don't see it. It looks like a little bit of variability in the paper tanning. The inks are preserved beautifully. In fact, they, they pop more. They look brighter because we don't have yellow paper underneath them. When you look along this stained edge, like I said, you can see slight variabilities in the color. It really just looks like differential tanning. It does not look even like the remnants of a stain when you're seeing it by itself as an after picture. So I couldn't be happier with this result. 
Here, when you look at the two of them side by side, you can now notice, because you know where to look for the stain remnants, that there's a little bit of darkness remaining right where the worst of the stains were. But again, without having seen this before picture, I don't think you notice that at all when you're reading the paper, especially in normal light. We have very intense LED lights here to show you exactly what's going on with the page and the results of the wash and the bleach. When you see the two of them side by side, again here, you firstly you just notice the dramatic improvement. I mean, it's really exceeded all my expectations. But secondly, when you see them here, one on top of the other, you can sort of tell where those dark areas used to be. And so now you can kind of notice that ah, there's a remnant of a stain. But if you see that bottom page without the context of the top page, it really doesn't look like a stain remnant at all. It just looks like a little bit of differential tanning in the page. I consider this stain removal and exceeds all expectations success. Most of the viewers and commenters thought that there was no way we were going to be able to completely remove these stains without bleaching out the ink or otherwise destroying this page. And so I couldn't be more thrilled with this outcome, and I'm sure the owner will be as well. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode 6 of this conservation project. This was a bit of a long episode, but I think it was worth it to show that entire process with exacting detail. So those of you that want to try this process on some stubborn comic book stains can do so. Most of the materials I use today are available from Amazon in the affiliate links in the video description. If you need any of them for your own conservation efforts, I appreciate you using those links. And if you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want more comic book conservation content, check out our Facebook group, the Comic Book Conservation Community. I plan to treat the remaining wraps off camera, so next episode we should be reassembling this book and we won't be far from wrapping up this project. Until next time, take care of one another.